right, let's start our MLC uh, May 3rd, 2021. What a get. So, yeah, we got porcelain here. I, I don't want to pull a Mark Marin, but I guess I should tell uh, what happened because porcelain would probably be interested in this anyway. Anyway, Bobby Kelly attacked. I didn't put this out on Twitter, but or any social media, because I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. But Bobby Kelly basically, I don't know if he beat the shit out of me on Friday night, but he came at me very aggressively. Uh, I was telling Adam before you guys came on. What basically happened was I saw the timeline was, you know, I was joking all week that I was going to bring security with me. Even I made a video last week when I was talking to Liz, like I'm going to have security and Aunt Mead and Jim Stance were going to come. To, this, to the shows, you know, in case come, anybody came at me. So I was like, I'm like, what's going to happen? I only got two shows. So the first show I do my set, uh, Bobby Kelly's on after me. Uh, he, I just do my set. I go to the back of the room. The room's like 30%. So I go to the back room. I'm just sitting at a table and pick, get my backpack and my jacket or whatever. And then Bobby uh, gets introduced. As he's walked in, he sees me. He comes over, says hi, shakes my hand, doesn't even fist pump or anything. He goes up, does his set. I watch a little bit of it. Then I, I have like, uh, then I have a spot at the Village Underground. Um, I have a spot at the Village Underground at like eight o'clock. And uh, hold on, let me see if I can play this. Oh yeah, audio? No, hold on, let me just. He never, he never had a chance. I know I should do the jokes after Jared was just looking for sympathy about being fat, but I'm <laughs> fuck fat people. Anyway, yeah. they take up too much room on the subway, right? Yes. Yeah. Don't sit down if you're fat. Just stand. You can yes. burn the calories and you're taking two seats, you fat fuck. Yeah. I found my audience. Woo. Woo I found my people. Anyway, basically, <laughs> Bobby was triggered by me saying that. I, I apparently when I got introduced, I didn't see he was he wasn't in the room at the Village Underground because I knew who was there. There's not a lot of people there, so I knew who was there. So uh, so then I do my set. Bob Biggerstaff is there because he knew I was doing his shows because we did the football show, Chad, on Friday. So he came by. I guess he wanted to po you know say like hi to Esty or whatever. So I did a set. It didn't go particularly well. I didn't very, have good sets on Friday. So I'm I'm leaving. And I said to Bob Bickerstaff, I go, you want to get something to eat? He said, of course. I, yeah, I figured that's an easy one for fatty. So I said, <laughs> uh, so I, he said, where? I said, like a diner or whatever. And he kind of made a face like, like he wanted to eat here. I don't know. Anyway, so we're leaving to going upstairs at Village Underground. And uh, Bob goes, I'm a, because now the fat black is where all the comics hang out. They don't have a show there. So. That's like where SD and everybody's hanging out. So I already, I already knew that because Liz had told me you should, you know, go say hi to SD. And I was like, let me do my shows first. And I thought, I, I'm, like, I'm only getting two spots. I really got to go be, you know, so grateful. Anyway, so, so but Bob goes, I want to go in and see who's there. So he goes in and then, I, and then I'm like, I might as well go in. And then I, you know, early in the day, I had, you know, I said I was going to wear a wire. So I kept my phone on during the whole, when I first got to the comedy cell, I kept my phone on, like they, they wouldn't know, but I recorded like I recorded a set in case anyone said anything or whatever. And I did it for the, before the first show, after the first show, and I'm like, this is stupid, nothing's gonna happen. So then as I'm going into the Fat Black, cause I know there's comics in there, I already poked my head in before just to see like, there's, you know, see what was going on, but just for a second. And um, so I'm like, you know what? Let me record this in case something weird happens. And then I thought, um, and I was gonna Facebook Live, but I'm like, that's dumb because if something happens and you know, if, if somebody's on Facebook Live, they'll get mad or whatever. So I just put it on my phone. I just was recording on my phone. So I walk in, Bobby's sitting there. I already talked to him. I'm not ambushing him. I didn't know he was in there. So I walk in, he's sitting next to Esty. So I'm going to go say hi to Esty and then leave, but my phone's still on. So somehow Bobby knows I'm recording or he's, or maybe the way I was holding it or whatever. So he goes, he goes, you're fucking recording this. He grabs my phone and then he starts, he's like fighting me to get my phone. So then he leaves the, the fat black. Now he's in where the stairs are, like the general area. And uh, he goes, delete it. You, he's yelling at me to delete it. So I, I, he get, I, I, I think he's going to throw the phone into the street. Then I grab the phone back. I'm deleting it. And then he starts fucking attacking me, like lunging at me. And he's 
it's like literally being attacked by a rhinoceros because he's so big <laughs> and so low center of gravity that I can't do anything to stop him. So it's like, I understand sumo wrestling now because you can't get a grip around the guy. So, so literally, I mean, luckily the bouncers were both there. They're bigger than him. They broke it up. But, uh, but I, there's marks all over my chest. Uh, I didn't make anything on social media about it. And then bite I was marks. like, huh? Sorry, I said bite marks. Yeah, but so 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 then the next day, Saturday, I go and I'm like, uh, you know, everybody's joking about it. I, I told the two doormen, I go, I just assumed Bobby was mad at like the, the documentary or, you know, the shit talking I've been doing with like the Landau Kumia thing. So they said he was mad because he saw my set at the Village Underground. He, he thought I was like body shaming him. Like he, cause they came in, he came out to them and said, Brennan's talking shit about fat people. And the bouncers are both big. They're gigantic dudes. I don't know if they're, they uh, consider themselves fat, but they're big. So I was like, I said, Bobby was mad about that. I go, that, I wasn't even talking about him. I didn't even know he was there. So I think then he, when, it, when I went into the room, to record me, I guess he thought that was part of love. You know, I was a continuation of me trying to fucking embarrass him. And I was like, this is fucking. So I, Saturday when I woke up, I basically apologized to Bobby because I thought it was about like, you know, the last five years that that was pent up rage. But then when I heard when the bouncers told me, I go, fuck that. So now I hired, I got, I retained a lawyer. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do, but it's like, but it's like, this is the second time I've been attacked at the club. I was thinking like, if I was a female comic, if I was a female comic, Bobby would be in jail. Uh, if if, I, if a customer attacked me like Bobby attacked me, they would also get, they would also call the police. They would have held a guy and called the police. So they could say it's like a you know like a locker room uh, misunderstanding or locker room brawl or whatever they want to call it. But it's like the fact of the matter is, it's like I mean he's crazy. He he, he was mad because I was I was talking on stage about fat people and he's like, how dare he? He just assumed it was about him. No, I don't know what the fuck he assumed, but it's like it wasn't about him. I'm talking about fat people in COVID and how they're dying, and that's good for everybody. Mm, it's a good premise. It's and then I and then Saturday night I was doing it and it killed. It's already killing. The, the, everybody hates fat people now, which is fantastic. I hope porcelain's not fat. I can't. We can't see him. So the point <laughs> is, the point is, I was like. I was mystified. At first, I was like, you know, I basically had it coming. I've been talking too much shit. And what was Bobby I, saying know, as he was thrusting towards you? What was he yelling? I don't remember. But then when he was there, when they finally grabbed him and he was outside, he, he, he was like, this is what he did to Goldman. And he's like, you fuck it. He, he was like yelling at me from the sidewalk. I was still inside. And they said they were saying to me, like, don't leave. I go, no, I got, I'm done. I got to leave. I, I, I go, how long is this going to stand here where I got to wait for Bobby to leave? I go, just let me leave. And then I'm walking out. Bobby still, Bobby won't even let me leave. There's like eight people now out there fucking between us, you know? And, and then I said, at one point I said to Bobby, I go, I didn't even do anything. It's deleted. Nothing happened. And then, and then one of the other comics was like, he goes, uh, he goes, don't, he goes, he goes, don't even talk, just leave. Like then now it's my fault still. Cause I'm trying to talk to a fucking, but it's like, uh, I, I think we should call this episode when animals attack. Cause it was like, it was <laughs> literally being attacked by a rabid dog where he's like, he, I, I was not going to be able to like calm him down. And literally the, luckily the bouncers are nice guys and they don't really take sides. And they, they, uh, they, they're just bigger than Bobby. Like they're gigantic. I mean, they're just gigantic people. So this was your first spot back. And that was my first night, my second spot, <laughs> my first night. And I had been saying, like, I was joking, you know, Jim Stansel and Aunt Mead and whatever. So I was like, this is really unfucking believable. And you know, everyone's probably blaming me. But then when I looked at the fucking math of it, I'm like, I go, I was attacked twice at, at the fucking club. I was like, this is like, it's not even safe. These are like not unsafe work conditions. Did Bobby respond when you texted him? Yeah, he goes, oh, that, he goes, it's cool. But then I was like, but then I was like, I was like, okay, we bury the hatchet. But then I'm like, but then when I heard he was mad about it, I'm like, fuck that, fuck him. I rescinded the uh, apology. <laughs> what do you think, Porcelain? I mean, uh... Yeah, don't get fat people madder, I, I guess is the takeaway from this. I mean, I don't know if it was hungry or, I mean. I mean, I've, it I've didn't no... help. 
it, I, I don't think it helps that like, uh, you know, like I'm not saying it's anything, but like, I was thinking like, he can't, Bobby can't be happy with like, even like the documentary, like, every, you know, it's like, it's, you know, you it's really whatever. And I, I just got a feeling that like, Bobby's not happy with what's going on with what, you know, like Tim, Tim Dillon's, all these guys blow up. They all go through Bobby kind of fucking, uh, Stavros. Well, he's lost open. Chip as well. So, huh? He lost Chip as well. So, he, I mean, his yeah. career right now isn't great, is it? Yeah, he's not good at this. At this, you and know. And he's fatter I've, than ever as well. Oh yeah, it's bad. It's just, it's not even. It's almost not even funny anymore. So, I don't want to get him riled up if he listens. But I'm just saying, it's like, it's like it's one point to be like to get jokes to make jokes and about like you know I I'm overweight, but now he's now it's like. It's a little bit, it looks a little bit concerning. So, uh, no, but it's like, it's like everyone seems to be doing pretty good with their podcast and Tim Dillon and Come Town and, and Luis Gomez and, and, and anybody else. And they all kind of go through, uh, you know what, dude. And then Bobby's stuck with like, you know, nobody listens to his show or if they listen, they don't, no one listens with any kind of excitement, you know, and, and so, I don't know if, and then the doc, and then you make the documentary about me. So I'm sure he's probably like at some point, like, you know, fucking Brennan what didn't even have a show until he met me, which is absolutely 100% true. So, so, uh, so I, I don't even know, but then, so I was sympathetic to him. I'm like, yeah, take a fucking shot at me. But then after I found out why he was mad, I was like, and he was telling these doormen, like, this is not, and this is all, and you know, him hitting me is all on video because I asked Liz, Liz, when I saw Liz the next day, the manager, I said, I said, where were you? She said, I was downstairs. I said, well, how'd you, how'd you see it? She goes, it's on video. So, so it's like, it's, it's basically, I don't know if he committed a crime, but it, it's like, I don't think you could just fucking attack people, especially if you're like that low with center of gravity. It's not fucking, it's look, it's, look what you did, porcelain. Look what you did. <laughs> look what I started. Yeah. <laughs> I know no, people I mean, are. I know people are resentful. Listen, listen. If you had made a poor, a documentary about Louis J. Gomez, I would have been like, "Fuck," because it's like you know, it's the documentary was flattering basically towards me, and it's just like, even I told I was I had my it was my birthday yesterday, so we went to this restaurant. We ran into this guy. Happy birthday, Kev. Oh, thanks. So we ran into this guy that's a, that uh, we're friends with through my through my kids, and he you know he didn't know it was my birthday, but then I. He's like, what's been going on? I said, you know, uh, uh, you know, this guy just made a documentary about me. And he goes, why would anyone waste their time? Basically, like, <laughs> why would anyone? He said, how long is it? Yeah. I said, like, about an hour. He goes, why would anyone? Why, why would? And I'm like, and I'm like, it's my birthday. Just fuck it. But even he was a little like I, you get a sense. People like are resentful that somebody, you know, it's like, what? Somebody made a documentary about you. That makes no sense. Anyway, so Porcelain, let's let's. uh Speaking of that, to Joe Matarese, like, do you want to answer the question, like, why do you make documentaries and why would you make three about Joe Matarese? And I was watching your mm. Joe Rogan documentary last night, which cracks me up because he's talking about his alpha brain supplements or whatever they're yeah. called. And, and he's like, he goes, this is, he goes, this is not snake oil. I'm not a snake oil salesman. This is, li this is science. This is science. <laughs> Yet last week science. he was saying, don't take the vaccine because do we really know what it is? Like, there's not enough. It's okay if the mm. alpha brain supplement, the protein supplements, whatever the fuck they're called, or or that's there's science behind that. You can trust that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Any you can't trust. You can't and... trust. You can't trust the the vaccine and and the testing they've done. Yeah, all the vitamins he pumps in him, the TRT, the testosterone, all the you know everything that he pumps inside of him, he'll swear to the end of the world that you know it's helping him and that it, it's got some sort of scientific basis in reality and then yeah you know you can have an argument about the vaccine but at the end of the day he's clearly taken a side on it and he's clearly taken a, a sort of an opinion on it so yeah i mean he's a guy that's, that's too stupid to really have those kinds of thoughts and that's the one thing that he does get right the week later when he does say that like look i'm stupid i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> and yeah i agree you are you are dumb <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about and the uh the the friend of mine, I'm not gonna say his name, but he was saying because because uh, he watched the he watched the when I was on Macumia after Landau quit, and he said he goes, oh you're wrong about Tim Dillon by the way, he's not. First of all, he's he is gay. I'm like, why you have proof? <laughs> you have proof of that? He goes, well, and you he know. showed you his asshole. <laughs> yeah, 
I said, no, no, no. He goes, I said, no, he's a conspiracy theorist. So I'm, I'm playing conspiracy theory with him. Like, show me proof that you're gay. I don't, there's no proof. So then yeah. he was saying, this friend of mine was saying, I may, you might not be a friend think. anymore. He was saying, Tim Dillon's not a conspiracy theorist. Joe Rogan's not really a conspiracy theorist. And he said, Alex Jones is not really one either. And, and most of the times, Alex Jones is right. He's telling me this. Literally, we were like, got into like a heated argument in this restaurant on my birthday. Our kids were there. My wife was there. My wife used to listen to Rogan, but now she doesn't. And then I watched your documentary last night where basically Tim Dillon's begging Rogan to go along with this his George H.W. Bush uh, conspiracy. And Alex Jones is like the l internationally known for being a conspiracy theorist. And I think Rogan either believes in these, most of these, or just does it for fun to, to get fans and to, to have stuff to talk about. What do you, you think? For, you, you forgot the number one conspiracy theorist, Chrissy Mayer. Yeah, but nobody knows her. So <laughs> let's keep it, let's keep it on the relevant. people that are popular. Yeah, I think that um, at one point, and I've made this point in the documentary, in that um, at one point it came from a real position of of wanting to, you know, Joe Rogan questions everything, his TV show and everything. Right. And um, yeah, I just think he just got too big. And I think when you, you know, when you get to that level of success and that level of notoriety, I, I think it's very difficult to take real positions on controversial topics. And you can do that. And then if you do do that, you end up in Alex Jones territory where he's completely bound and, you know, persona non grata in in sort of, and, and joe rogan made a conscious decision at some point during that sort of upswing of success where he realized that i can go one of two ways i can drop the conspiracy dangerous topic talk thing and gain the the, the riches the notoriety the success for that or i can stick by my guns and keep going down this path and, and i think also you get older don't you and when you get older you, you kind of get more rooted into reality i believe so, but you would agree that Tim Dillon, Joe Rogan, and Alex Jones are all should be classified as conspiracy theorists, or at least they don't, they don't, they don't, uh, they don't shy away from them. Like they, they, a good conspiracy theory is well, is is great for them. Well, my, <laughs> I mean, my world of conspiracy theory is more sort of. Um, hearing things from Germa, Germa Rudolph or something talking about, you know, um, <laughs> wooden doors and stuff. But so, you know, I wouldn't class what they talk about really as any sort of like edgy, um, interesting conspiracy anyway. I mean, if you, if your view of a conspiracy theory is, is, you know, taking a, a negative position on the coronavirus, then you're just one of millions of people. There's no, nothing necessarily conspiracy, conspiratorial about that. Um, so I, I just think that, especially in Rogan's position and perhaps a little bit in Tim Dillon's as well, I think they like to advertise themselves as, you know, edgy conspiratorial guys. And I think it's all a bit of a, I think it's just, just all a bit of a very thin veneer. And the minute they get pressed on it, just like Rogan did last week with the uh, coronavirus stuff, it's immediately, oh, I'm stupid. Oh, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's, it, you know, it's just that, like I said, it's a thin veneer that they, they use in order to gain, you know, in order to gain an audience. Yeah, right. Tripoli did it. Sam Sam went hard on conspiracy theory to find an audience. Yeah, you, you try and push them on any of these controversial topics. And first of all, the topics aren't controversial. And then secondly, even if you push them on the weakest, most, quote, controversial topics that they hold, they'll fold immediately. Because success means more to them and they don't want to lose... They don't want to lose sponsors. They don't want to lose an audience. They don't want to lose money. They don't want to, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it's this easiest thing in the world to do what they do. Yeah. That's what I was trying to tell my friend, my former friend that, that uh, you just. Uh, former friend. <laughs> that it's just like, it's shtick and they are, they're only doing it because they know it kind of works and it's it helping them become popular. And there's a lot of conspiracy theory theorists out there. And then the conspiracy theory guys always act like, they're hipper than than the mainstream media. Like they know stuff that we don't know. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. What do what what? Like even my, I was talking to my friend about the the Jeffrey Epstein hanging. He goes, there's there's proof that he that he was murdered. I'm like, where is it? I said, you think you think hmm. the mainstream media, if there was hmm. any proof, they wouldn't jump on it. That would be a fucking great story. So so <laughs> if there's any proof. Yeah. CNN and Fox News would be would be lab would be eating this up 
like Bobby Kelly at a fucking Vegas buffet. So, <laughs> so you, 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 you think he died of natural causes or? It doesn't matter. No, no, I think, no, I think it, it doesn't matter. There's no proof that he was murdered. Uh, they said he hung himself. So they say yeah. Tim Dillon's gay. There's no proof. Oh, let's well, see what gay. you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no proof. So that's what the, the conventional wisdom that Tim, that's what, that's what people are saying. Tim Dillon's gay. They're saying Jeffrey Humps Epstein hung himself. What would it take for you to be convinced that Tim Dillon is uh, a homosexual? I, I, at this point, I'd probably have to see him penetrate a man. <laughs> yeah, like, me I, too. I think that would, I, that I, would at this it. point, I'm like, I, I, I mean, I, I could kiss another man if, if, you know, that's not hard to do, but I think having intercourse with another man, mm. I think that that would definitely do it for me. I'd be like, okay, because that's a that's a that's a serious thing to <laughs> like, do. Okay, I'll drop it. <laughs> Kevin, let me ask you, why would he pretend to be gay then, if that's the case? Huh? Why would he pretend to be gay? I'm just curious. Because it makes it more interesting. Like Milo, mm. Milo just Milo uh just said he's not gay. So again, yeah, he's he more, he's doing the Christianity shtick now. And, yeah, so and he like was that, more that doesn't fit with gay so he's had to drop the gay to right so he's more interesting stuff. he's more interesting as a right-wing provocateur if he's gay because otherwise he's just like a typical dude right-wing republican but he's right-wing provocateur but he's gay it's the same thing it's like it makes him it's a makes a better backstory he wears also it his- gives you it gives you a license to to get away with more stuff like milo would do the gay thing in order to attack the homosexuals and attack the you know degenerate side of of left-wing politics and you could say the same with tim villain that with let with 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 comedy so kind of infused with the sort of left wing you know LGBT sort of mentality, he can attack that and have a kind of immunity to it because he's a gay person. And- yeah, he's protected. Yeah, he's yeah. The absolutely protected class. Like if you're LGBTQ or a woman or any kind of minority in comedy or anything, you're protected. Like if you're black, right. you can say whatever you want as a black comic. You as a white guy, you literally have to go. Is this okay? So. So yeah, Tim Dillon absolutely can say whatever he wants as a gay man. If he was a straight man, they'd be like, "You, where, where do you get off?" But he's like, "Hey, I have sex with men. I'm, I'm, I'm handicapped." That's a good impression. That's <laughs> yeah, really it's very bad. similar to some of your other impressions. <laughs> think of it. I nailed it. Hey, I'm Tim Dillon. <laughs> hey, I'm gay. I'm so gay. Well, that, it does make sense because look what happened to Owen. You know, he's deplatformed, and because he was going hard on everything. Yeah, if Owen was gay, it would have takes it would have been so much harder for them to deplatform him. And just like when I saw Milo switch, I was like, it's it they're all it's all show it's a it's a fucking shell game and it's show business. So right. he's like, now I'm straight. That makes it even more interesting. Now that he's straight, because you do believe he's gay with his hair style and it's just you know the way he talks. <laughs> Kevin, but- it calls into it calls into question whether or not being gay is is kind of a genetic thing or if it's something you choose and i know that some on the right wing think you can kind of choose to be it or and and it's almost like people are gay just to spite us <laughs> so so that's almost genius then from milo because he's basically supporting what people on the right think that you can choose it so he's almost like well he's a he's a grifter he's, he's going to i mean it's pretty obvious grift really yeah but i'm saying like now to the people on the right he they're probably like Look, Milo's proving our point that that you choose what's what your sexuality is. Right, exactly. Yeah. And that's who he wants for he that's the one group he doesn't want to lose is the people on the right, because that's been writing. Yeah, because death. gays don't care about him. Gays don't want him. Right. So the only people that want him are the right wing. Right. Okay, let's wow. do an experiment. Let's say that you're I'm gay. I'm making a lot of sense today. Kevin. <laughs> Let's say that you're gay. Say you divorce your wife. And I will say this. I will say this. Saturday when I went in, I was kind of like shell shocked. And then I, I literally had, I mean, the, the first set, I completely killed. I mean, I was like, every, and I was like, I had two great sets on Saturday. So then I'm like, then I got confused because I'm like, because I thought I can, I'll just walk away from comedy and, and I can't stand getting beat up all the time. But, but then I'm like, so I was almost like, with all the excitement, I kind of, I kind of cleared my head. I was like, I, I'm a, I became a good comic because I think I've been carrying around too much baggage or something. And I was like, fuck comedy. And then uh, Bobby, Bobby attacked me. And the next day, I walk in. I'm like, 
I have no confidence. I feel like I'm on, on I'm walking on ice and I'm just completely confused. And I go up and I have two great sets. And I was like, wow, this, this shit, now this mind game with show with comedy and show business never fucking ends. Cause I, at that point I was, I was not going to do my sets on Saturday. Cause I was like, why should I let Liz call me? She goes, where are you? Cause I was running a little, little late and I go, I'm what I, 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 she called me and I was like, a minute away i was near the basketball course on west fourth street so she goes where are you i said i said uh gnome canceled me he canceled my spots after last night she goes he did i said yeah and then i lenny marcus was walking up the sidewalk right past me i go lenny marcus <laughs> so, so then i said to liz no i'm actually right across the street she goes i know you just said hi to lenny i didn't say hi i just yelled his did name. lenny say hi back no he always acts like he's he's in the middle of the nfl draft and also uh <laughs> Also, but it was probably the first time anyone's ever yelled his name out on, on while he was walking down the streets of Manhattan. <laughs> so what was your experiment? If I turn gay, I, I literally, I could do anything to get as famous as Joe Rogan at this point. Like to have sex with a man, I could I could blow a dude right now Jesus. to get my Patreon to 10,000. It would be mm. so easy. You think, you think there's any, you think, you think at this point, and first of all, Tim Dillon could just be like, when Chris Farley worked at SNL, I, I mean, when I was at SNL after Chris Farley, somebody was saying like, I was saying, you know, did Chris Farley have a great, somebody came up about Chris Farley dating habits. She goes, no, he would get somebody who worked there a long time. Marcy Klein was saying, she goes, she goes, oh, he's disgusting. I'm like, he's disgusting. He's, 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 he's famous and rich. Women wouldn't. But I think at some point you just, you just go like, I'm disgusting. Nobody wants to have sex with me. Maybe Tim Dillon's there now. He's like, I, I'm not. Yeah, I'm gay, but I, I no one's gonna have sex with me. I'm just. Did you send a picture of him with his with his shirt off when he was in that pool? It's like he's. So maybe he's like, maybe he's like gay, but he's not even practicing. You know, he's yeah, like not he even, doesn't ever have to act on it because of how fat and gross he is. <laughs> yeah. So maybe he's like on paper he's gay, but he's is he sexually active? I don't know. Maybe he's like I don't. I'm not. So so. It, I might be having as much gay sex as Tim Dillon. And could I have sex with a man to get my Patreon up to a hundred thousand a month? Absolutely. Even like Dan Adderman, even non uh, sexually attractive, historically sexually attractive. It doesn't have to be George Clooney. It could just be a dude. So to think that Tim Dillon or, or Milo or any of these motherfuckers would be like, no, that's not what they are. That's what my friend kept saying. You don't, you, that's not what they are. I'm like, I know what they are. I've been with. I've been with them. I've been with, physically in their presence. I know these people. Hey, speaking of gay, what do you think about the Anthony Jeselnik Leslie dog Les dog fight? Who do you think's gayer? Out of those I love two? Anthony. I have after this. I love Anthony Jeselnik. I abs I always liked him. I always. I always liked him. And then. You know, Leslie Jones, for, for what she did, I'm sure it's 100 percent true where she just she doesn't like him. I think she doesn't like white guys that aren't like Lenny's, that aren't cucks to her, that that have like attitude because, you know, she's like, no, you know, nobody, she, nobody will date her. Speaking of like who's gay and who's not gay, like L Leslie Jones doesn't have I don't think she has sex. So so is she is she, what is she? Who knows? But I'm saying like. Uh, uh, she's probably like resents like tradition. I mean, Anthony Jeselnik is handsome. I would fuck him without upping my Patreon. Like I would just <laughs> fuck him because for practice. So, uh, so I'm lose saying patrons to fuck him. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would let my Patreon go down. I would sacrifice just to fuck Anthony Jeselnik. <laughs> so he's. So wow. I think. I think on some level, Leslie Jones like resents just kind of traditionally like successful like classic white males and, and she's she not handling to, her celebrity very well she keeps it blowing up like this doing shit like this well i mean it's i don't think it's helping i mean i think she still thinks that she's riding some wave you know like she's she's hosting the vmas and and you know when she got the the uber eats commercials but i mean the things that she's that that were they they actually quantify how successful it is, like movies and, and TV shows. She's not doing well. It's like Neil going, I'm in a commercial. It's like, yeah, but people don't have to pay for it. And you're not even the star of the fucking commercial. So uh, I don't know if Uber Eats is getting an uptick in fucking food orders when Leslie Jones uh, runs her commercial. Is that what she's advertising? Well, you guys don't get that, right? Well, we've got Uber Eats, but we don't have her adverts over here, obviously, but... 
I mean, I can't imagine anything that will put you off your meal more than Leslie Jones. And there's four of her. They have her like in four different <laughs> outfits. Oh, so if you don't like her, it's going to be like. Are they similar wow. to the outfits that Aaron Berg wore on, the, on his show? It's like, uh, and then she actually says she's going to meet a guy named Lenny. She goes, Lenny824 on like some dating app. So whatever. It's, it's, <laughs> it's corny and everything. But the point is that, uh, yeah, she's got to, I think she's just, I think she just thinks she's riding a wave and let's ride the wave. Maybe she is. But uh, I know she, I know that her, her game show bombed. I know that the show coming to America wasn't well received and uh mm. and whatever and and then go i looked up ghostbusters ghostbusters lost lady ghostbusters lost 70 million i mean that's amazing consider it's like a fucking franchise like that and it lost 70 million if you look up wikipedia and i do i mean mm. taken in the box office and how much they had to spend to advertise they can they 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 calculated at a loss of about 70 million whoa yeah. So we know ne- you never even answered a question, Porcelain. So do you ever to to to, answer, to, to, to Joe Matteri's question? Wh- why do I? Mm. Do you want to tell people? Oh why yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you do it? Um, it's just fun. It's just funny, isn't it? You know, it's not yeah, really. We much love them. We we <laughs> love him before he did it on me. I we I loved them. I I thought. I mean, I thought this is fantastic. I, st- I started doing it because um, you know that beige frequency guy. Yeah. yeah. He did the seven part thing on anthony and um I was, I was, seven i mean seven he's done seven um so i was watching those and i was thoroughly enjoying them as you expect i would and uh i, I just realized that like this is in my skill set and i could like i could do something like this and at the time we were we were just fucking with joe matteris just generally speaking on you know on the subreddit and just you know making his life a bit of a misery so i just figured that like the worst thing he would want right now is a documentary on it <laughs> <laughs> and uh so yeah just you know just was funny and, and i mean i i could i could sit here and do stuff on people to get views and and all that but the, i'd much rather just do another five on joe how did you get involved <laughs> how did you come <laughs> up on this world um it's, it's just you know internet stuff isn't it it's just you, you watch op and anthony and you get involved in the sort of subreddit side of it and then sometime i don't know 10 years ago maybe the, the sort of you could tell the energy in that subreddit that was just dedicated to the show and that, that was you know celebrating all the best bits of it it's a bit like a long marriage where all the things that, that we used to like about the show and all that we just started to really really hate and then you know the longer that they're on the more mistakes they're making and the more sort of uh you know the, the more we're able to to poke fun at and and it's that thing when you start just n- like needling a little bit um, you, you just it just gets it's really rewarding and quite fun so it, it just became kind of like the new way to uh enjoy comedy i find it fascinating they found their way to england that's just weird to me for some reason i don't know why yeah well we never obviously we didn't have serious over here but um there was a, there was like a guy called Stephen knight who used to just upload all of the old o and a shows and I mean, our terrestrial radio, we, our radio over here is is awful. We've got like nothing here <laughs> to listen to, and there's just no content that was like um, Opie and need over here. So it really sort of filled a void, and for a while it was good. And yeah, um, but I mean, sorry, sorry to cut you off. So you had to wait for like a YouTube upload to watch the show, and what year was this? Oh, this. I mean, I got into it uh, maybe ten years ago or so. Um, but I mean, they'd, they'd do the show in the morning, and then it would be uploaded by that that night. Oh, okay. That's interesting. But yes. So yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it's not really interesting, but <laughs> you know, it's just, um, it, it like I said, it was just it's funny to because that that community that those um, I mean, the community kind of doesn't really exist anymore, but it kind of does at the same time. Like it's just kind of spread out everywhere at this point. But, um, but the subreddit also be almost becomes funnier than the show, right? Because the show just becomes kind of stale, and this, then the subreddit. Becomes, yeah, yeah, exactly. The subreddit yeah. becomes fun because you guys are shitting on the show, even if you don't enjoy the show, you enjoy the subreddit shitting yeah, on the, the show part of it. The OP and Anthony subreddit was probably the the most funny place I've ever seen on the like. It was in, in its prime. There was obviously a lot of like shit on there, but in its prime, it was just the funniest place to go. Uh, you know the the, the the stuff posted on there was, was great. I mean, I don't know if you've heard of the story of um, 
of Killer Coon. <laughs> he's a he's this guy who um ended up killing his child for a, a stereo <laughs> for a sound bar. He was a guy that basically um sort of long story short, he uh, used to cancel gigs for Joe Cumia, Anthony Cumia's brother, who plays in a U2. Uh, oh, U2 I heard about band. this. Yeah, I remember hearing about this. So yeah, he he would um and he was he was notorious on the subreddit. We all knew him, and he, he would just Wait, he, he would, would go too to cancel, far. He would try to cancel. Well, he would Joe's successfully gigs. he would successfully cancel Joe Joe's gigs to the point where Joe had to go on the People's Court I to try that. and get money back. Yeah, <laughs> so um so he would. He would just call up uh, venues. He'd look at where Joe was playing. He'd call up venues and just get just get the gigs cancelled by sending these venues like loads of Joe's racist tweets. And, um, <laughs> I don't know why I'm so, laughing. People are trying to do this to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> and so then months months later, uh, the news broke that he uh, he was trying to steal a sound bar uh, from a, a, a Walmart oh. or whatever, and um, he was driving away and he thought he was getting chased by the cops. And uh, he pulled into an intersection or something and then crashed his car and his toddler flew through the windscreen <laughs> and splattered against the pavement. And then he ended up walking over the now dead corpse of his child to try and get away from the cops. And um, now he's serving about, um, I think I think he's only doing about 15 years, maybe, I think seven to 30 actually. So he'll probably do about 15, but. Holy shit, so it's the... real. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hundred percent real. Oh, Jesus. Um, so yeah, it's just that's just a small example of like what the kind of stuff that was going around around that place was, um, and it, it you know made Anthony's life a misery. So yeah, I, Joe I, Matter. I, I just like to picture him still in jail trying to still cancel Joe Cumia. Like he's, like, he's allowed, <laughs> using his one phone call. Yeah, he's allowed on a, he's allowed on a laptop for five minutes a day. And he's all he tries to do is cancel Joe Cumia gigs. <laughs> well, the funny thing is Joe Cumia celebrates that that kid's death now because he's like that's what you get that's what you get for cancelling my gigs and it's like completely ignorant to the fact that a young child has died yeah to joe all that matters is that he got one over on this on this guy that's cancelling his gigs yeah. so now he's he's like tap dancing on the grave of some two-year-old <laughs> innocent toddler who happened to just be the victim in the whole thing so let me ask you this do you like anthony and jim and opie or do you hate them or like i'm trying to figure it out oh um I mean, at this point, I mean, the subreddit has, has been kind of dead for so long now that, you, you know, you just you kind of just let go. And um, it, it was funny for a few years. And now um, I wouldn't even I, I'm not part of that anymore. But I mean, I don't know if like it, it doesn't it's not about and I was trying to, I was telling this to Joe. We had an interview the other day that I probably won't release um, just to annoy him. And um, are you, we talking- Joe? you you got your interview with Joe? Yeah, we did like three hours and I just, it was, uh, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was, it was good. It was interesting, but I just think it's funny if I just never put it out because no, Joe you got to put it out. Don't torture us. Well, <laughs> Joe was, Joe was really like desperate for this interview to be the one thing to kind of like change people's perceptions of him. Yeah. And, um, and it was annoying because I was trying to be as mean spirited as I can. I had some really <laughs> awful questions where we just went through his entire career and I just went through every single mistake in his in his career, and I was expecting some pushback. I was expecting him to start, you know, getting angry or something because I was asking kind of like mean questions, and he just wasn't. He was just there going, "Yeah, I know, porcelain. I I'm bad at this," and I'm just like, well, "Give me something." So, yeah, oh. I, I kind of I, I kind of finished it, and, and I don't feel very good about it to be honest. <laughs> you thought this was going to be a PR. See- he gave it three hours and, and there's not oh, yeah, that much yeah. there. I mean, there's no, there's lots there. There's, uh, there's a lot there, but um, you know, I, I guess my frustration is, is that as far as content goes, the kind of content that I want, I think it, it, it gives, it puts Joe into sympathetic a light for, for my liking. <laughs> so, so he was using that as PR almost like he was just going to exactly, turn his, yeah. his image around. Like ah, I'll, I'll use him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'll, I'll probably edit, um, chunks of it and, and you know put it out um, but I was I mean I was editing it yesterday and then Adobe Premiere crashed and wouldn't auto save so I just kind of binned it at that point but you uh, but he wants to sell it right yeah yeah did you <laughs> you saw those messages right so well, um, he asked me he asked me what I what I thought uh, I said well, oh he did ask, yeah I said what did he say to you 
he texted me. He said he said he wants to. He said Porcelain wants to interview me. What should I do it? I said yeah, I'll do it. He said do it. He goes. Oh he thought you're gonna. He thought you're gonna do a phony, uh, like ask him a question, then put in a fake answer, like Jim Jeffries did. Which I <laughs> so uh, yeah, I could do that. Yeah. So I said he won't do that. That's too tacky, and he's whatever. Mm. And I, I said it'll hurt his credibility if he does. I said just tape exactly. It on your, yeah, yeah. And I said tape it on your phone. And then that way you have a copy anyway. You have a version of mm. it anyway. And he said, he goes, okay. And then he said, I think he asked me, um, uh, you know, should we, should I try to get money or something like that about the money? And I was like, I said, right. I don't know if people are going to, that's kind of the Bobby Kelly kind of thing. We're like, I said, just build up your audience. And then, then, I mean, I mean, I don't know how many people are going to pay for the, yeah. the, the Joe Matarese interview, you know? No one will. I mean, <laughs> it's ridiculous. The notion that, that people it's the would same pay, eight I mean, people, same eight people that are on his Patreon. Exactly. Yeah. These eight people are just following him around and paying him, you know, $5 a month. I mean, it's not going to work. He texts he, well, he didn't text me. He DM'd me um, after confirming the interview. And, uh, and I thought it was all set. I was just like, okay, Friday at 4 PM, we'll do a zoom call. That's all good. And then he just kept asking me, what's the game plan? What's the game? He asked me about three times, what's the game plan? And I was like, I, I mean, I don't, need, I don't need to hold your hand through an interview, do I? I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. You come on, I talk to you, and then we end it. But he just, and then he was like, well, where's it going to live? Are you charging people to watch it? What's the end goal? I'm See, like, that's the okay, matter. Is. Can... He's always thinking. He's always thinking. You know, so I'm like, okay, I get, I know where he's going with this. And I'm, I'm like, nah, I'll just probably pop it on the channel. And then he's like, well, would you want to try and make some money? <laughs> and he's like, we can talk about the game plan again on the phone. This is his key word. Porcelain, he's an idea guy. You know that. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> we, we had the funniest part about this whole thing is he wanted to do a pre-interview interview. interview. <laughs> so we ended up having a conversation that was not recorded um, the night before. And it was about an hour long and it was just kind Jesus. of like, it was just him asking me questions about the kinds of questions that I was going to ask. <laughs> and, um, and, and oh, most of the conversation was him trying to angle some sort of scheme or some sort of like project for us to do. And I kept saying to him, I was like, Joe, like money as a motivator, that's, that's the problem you've had all along is that, you know, you, you're too motivated by money. You need to think of good ideas and then the money will, sort of work itself out and he was like yeah yeah i understand what you're saying i understand and then i'm thinking okay good good we can drop it he's like but there's got to be something we can do together i'm like god you're not oh. listening to me oh my god he just, he just keeps giving you fodder over and over and over yeah i mean he's lucky i'm not a complete scumbag and i didn't record that phone call because that was that was better than the interview that would have literally um <laughs> That would have been like chum to the water to people that watch my uh, videos. What oh, if he um, started a podcast with you? Yeah, you guys should. Yeah, no, he much. wanted to. He wanted. <laughs> did you not see the the um the tweets he sent out where he agreed to the interview and then he wanted to then he agreed to an interview with Mike David, which was a terrible idea, by the way. And then he, he tweeted out, and I had no part in this. I swear to God, I had no part in this. But he just tweets out, and he's like. How many of you would like to see me and at Porcelain uh, work on a project together? Um, what ideas do you have? And I'm like, I didn't sign up to this. What are you talking about? What are you dragging? So uh, he's it's it's like getting ahead of himself. And um, and again, it's it's this money as a motivator thing with Joe that he just needs to let go of because it's just it's not working. Like nothing he does is going to make money until he thinks of the idea first. I, I like the part of the the third um, documentary about Matarese that you had other people, like the one guy with the hat, with the leather hat, and then the, the other guy yeah. you couldn't see. And then, you know, the red bar stuff. I mean, the red bar stuff is all kind of out there anyway. But I thought it was good that you had, like, kind of pe different people saying. So it didn't look like you were, like, obsessive Joe Matarese. It's like, it's like there's <laughs> a whole... There's a whole group of people that are obsessed with Joe Matarese, you know. That's the reality of it as well. I mean, I'm I'm kind of a Johnny Come Lately to it a little bit. I mean, to some degree, I am, but some, to some I'm not. But yeah, it's it's uh, at one point there were thousands of people on that subreddit, and it was just all dedicated to Joe Matarese for a large <laughs> period of time. And Joe's <laughs> like, "How can we monetize this?" Yeah, yeah. When uh, so if everybody when, gives a dollar, that's a thousand dollars. 
exactly yeah so when <laughs> when there's parts where joe's trying to like he gets he gets all the trolls kind of like messaging in on his facebook live stream and he's trying to ask them like what what can i do to make you like me what do i need to do to get you on side and stuff like I mean, at that point, it's it's literally only Red Bar fans, really. But at, at one point, like I said, it was thousands of people that were really just completely... I mean, you go by the documentary now, I think it's over 30,000 people now have watched it. And if you look at the comments, it's literally over 1,000 people that are all just trying to give this 52-year-old man life advice. And it's... Um, I mean, I can't imagine what it must feel like to be in his position and have this sort of spotlight on you, everybody just questioning every single decision you make. It's got to be quite uh, annoying. Well, at this point, I think it's. I think he gets paranoid because I think his his his. Uh, I'll, I'll call her his better half. His better half is probably like, you can't do an interview. He's he's duping you. Like, are you stupid? You're going to do an interview with the guy who's made three documentaries about you. Like, I know my wife would say she'd be like, "Are you a fucking? You know what? I almost said the tard <laughs> word. Are you a tard?" Risa. Yeah, so I be so I know she I know she, my wife would be like crazy. So I think that's that's like listen, I'm not going to speak for Joe, but I just I know what, if he was single, I don't th- you know it would be different because I just think you know his wife probably is like you're getting duped, you're getting embarrassed, and then mm. and then and then also if if the, if he wants to work with you, let's make some money. Let's and so he's probably like okay, <laughs> it's like he just gets scolded. <laughs> by his parents and he's like okay i'll do it but can we make some money and you're like well i don't do it to make money i just do it and then the classic i don't know which which documentary was in when he was talking on to his phone when i was driving where he's like hey (laughs) i know you i know you're out there i know you watch everything Mm -hmm. i do let's make some money i think that was the end of number two but he's like yeah yeah he goes i I, yeah are you out there i know you've i know you know everything (laughs) i do so let's make call me let's make some money the funniest thing about that is that it wasn't a it, he didn't say just like oh let's make some money he said you've you've got to include me in your next documentary and then he said don't worry porcelain i'll cut you in yeah as if <laughs> as if so i've got to do all the work yeah and then i get a, a small cut of the proceeds at the end yeah. of it like he's the one managing the money side of it i mean it's remarkable it was classic i mean i, I yeah I, yeah I mean, you got to admire his, his hoods. I, I, that's the thing about him as well, is that like he keeps talking about it as hate and it couldn't be further from the truth. Even Red Bar, when he covers him, you can tell that there's a, a level of like affection for him. You can tell that it comes from like, this guy is a bit of a goof. This guy is just like getting in his own way. Um, there's, there's, there's no real, I mean, apart from there's a small corner of people like the guy there was a there was a guy once who um i can't remember where joe, joe it was in the documentary but joe was um doing a gig and he was like featuring or something and uh that headliner uh, ended up getting these uh, messages from one of red bar's fans um saying that joe keeps calling you the n-word and <laughs> um and uh then he started sending joe death threats <laughs> and that's when joe decided that he had to like um leave twitter at 10 p.m he gave a specific time and he said i'm leaving twitter at 10 p.m because i can't take this anymore um so and then he was, he was all the way up like to, the way up to 9 59 he was still there right he was tweeting until then <laughs> yeah like he was tweeting just like as if it was normal and then 10 came and then he just like stopped yeah, it's like but he came back like a few weeks <laughs> yeah. yeah he came back a few weeks later though like it's, it's similar to like when he was on jim and sam and they said like yeah you've got to deactivate twitter and he was like no, he said, like, yeah, I deactivated Twitter. And they were like, you're a stand-up comedian. What are you doing that for? <laughs> he was like, well, I, I activated it back on the train over here. Uh, when you when you did the thing on Sam Roberts, like, I didn't know he didn't, he only ate, like, baby food and stuff. Like, was that a, was that no. a common, was that a common uh, thing people know about? Was that common knowledge? Yeah, yeah, he's. He, I mean, everything about him is, is kind of like arrested development syndrome with Sam. I mean, he doesn't drink. Um, the taste of like there was a show where he had like vodka or something, and he was like, "E, it's yucky," and he was like spitting it out. Um, and then obviously you've got like the fact that he's thirty something years old and he's collecting wrestling figures and sneakers and all this. You know, it's just like I said, it's arrested development. I mean, I can't attack him too much because at the end of the day, he's like. He's a radio presenter on, you know, a, 
big show and he's you know doing the wrestling thing so yeah good for him but it, you know but he still doesn't eat regular food no no of course not he, could, he can't even eat steak they tried <laughs> to feed him steak and again he was like this is icky and he started like vomiting into a yeah, bin. i saw it he was like gagging i saw the documentary yeah. he was, like, gagging. <laughs> yeah. and i was like this is yeah like, unbelievable. He, he, like, he like loves like applebee's and stuff yeah he eats like the the thing is he eats like chicken tendies that's he's like he gets his, he gets his girl or wife to just make him chicken tendies every every other day <laughs> and like mashed what do you food, want for your like... birthday dinner and yeah nothing that I have to ch- <laughs> nothing that i have to really chew too much yeah yeah give me give me some curly fries and chicken tendies again but no he's i mean i'm surprised i'm looking back i'm so surprised i managed to even get a documentary out of that guy because there really isn't a lot to talk about with sam he's just kind of just an annoying guy that <laughs> shouldn't be where he is but for some reason the universe has given him the gift of uh, a radio job i actually saw on twitter that you're uh having second thoughts on doing the documentary on bert right I think I've solved the issue. The only, my, my only issue is that um, I spent the weekend trying to do prep, not the Jim Norton prep, but like show prep on Bert. <laughs> and um, it's just that other than the, there's, there's, there's light, there's so many lies that, that, that I've, you know, stumbled Wait, what across are some of the, give us the three best lies. I mean, the machine just is the, the first, just obviously. Tea, just the yeah. I mean, the machine obviously is the, just a complete, I mean, he's made a career off that and, um, I, I I guess if if it's just if he just had the machine story as a as a sort of isolated thing, then I'd be like, okay, perhaps that could be true. But even the even the idea of it that he's on a he's on a train with the Russian mafia and that they they rob the train, like I, I'm I'm sorry, I'm going to need a little bit more than some of your old school friends corroborating the story. I'm going to need like real evidence on that. If you're going to base an entire successful career on this story then i need a little bit more to tell me that this isn't complete and a bullshit um, brennan, so that brennan, one Bre- brennan was on that early too he says there's tons of holes in the story yeah i've i've also people have been telling me that there's different versions of the story that he tells on different places where it's almost like he can't even remember the, which which one's the right version of the story anymore <laughs> and yeah, like which, there's lie, a, there's... which lie am i going with today yeah, and there's there's this video where he's um he's just he just like randomly adds part of a big chunk of the story t- to the machine like saga, as if like oh yeah by the way I've completely forgot about this extra bit and he's like I can see what you're doing but you, you, people are getting tired of the machine so you're adding sprinkles on it now and you're trying to make it like new again, so I mean that's the big one, I think the uh, the story the, the Tracy Morgan PCP story I don't know if you've heard much about that but um. It's basically, um, I think it's that Tracy Morgan um, spikes him with PCP and they end up getting in a big fight. Um, and that's that's a story that Tracy Morgan himself actually says is not true. <laughs> so, And then Jay Moore so took the story, right? Jay Moore took the story and started saying it happened mm, to him. Oh, I, I did not know that, but I'll definitely uh, I'll, I'll take that and, uh, and, and put that in if, if that's true. Yeah, there's um, a whole thing about that. It's on the Internet. You can find it. I, I really thing. hate. Sorry, I was just going to say. I really hate the um the, the particular one. I really don't like is is the lightning and tongue story. Where he this was in a this was in a podcast he does called um something's burning where he just brings on podcasters and uh, stand up comics to like cook a meal for them, and it's yeah. you can tell there's like a, you can you can tell there's a lull in the conversation and that like you know because he's the host he has to like fill it or something. And I think uh, Colin Quinn and Nick the Pollard's on it. And Colin Quinn say something like, uh, "Yeah, how about Tampa? Hey, like just the place." I guess that's I guess that's enough of a kind of jumping off point. So then he just he just out of nowhere is like, "Yeah, when I grew up in Tampa, um, I knew two kids without tongues. Oh, and I saw three <laughs> people get struck by lightning." And I'm like, "You're just asking to like get found out. You just basic at this point, he's just like." He's just like, I can't believe I'm getting away with all these lies. I'm just going to say the most silly, wacky shit off the top of my head. Um, three people got struck by lightning. Um, two people don't have tongues. And people are lapping it up like as if, like no one's even questioning it. Colin Quinn sat there and he's like, what? It's no tongues? And um, again, it's like, it's, it's if any one of these isolated events was, and that was it, then, then I'd understand. But it's like, this guy either is a compulsive liar or he's lived like some kind of like Forrest Gump, most impressive, incredible life I've ever heard. 
and um, I'm willing to not believe that. I think it's probably just that he's a compulsive liar with no talent and storytelling is his only vice. I remember what he lied. I was on his podcast with Florentine and I said, so, I, I lied and he went along with the lie. Like I said, man, if, if it wasn't for you, I couldn't have gotten through that. And Bert had nothing to do with it. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, wow, I just lied and you're lying with me. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and to, funny... see, to see three people get struck by lightning, statistically, that's like impossible. Mm, exactly. Yeah, that, that's ridiculous. Um, he, it's the way he told it as well. Like, it was so kind of passive. And um, you know where liars, they just like offer bits, extra bits of information. Like he'll offer like the exact location, even though it's not really relevant, <laughs> just to kind of beef up the, the story. And it's just like, you can just see through it. And he's like, yeah, yeah. The guy like basically exploded, like his jewelry melted into him. And, and uh, then he'd come up to us and he was like, whoa, what happened? And we're like, yeah, you just got dotted, bro. And it's like, I don't know. This doesn't sound real. He does do that all the time. He's like, oh, I remember I was on the corner of Fountain and Sunset. I remember it was a, it was mm. a hazy day. <laughs> he does that all the time. He starts off every every lie with, uh, with, I swear to God this happened. I swear to God, I'm not bullshitting you. And it's like, okay, if you have to start every sentence with a disclaimer, then there's something wrong. Uh, do you think that if a guy's like really good at lying, that that's is that a skill, like a show business skill? Like, especially with the, in the podcast world, it almost seems like, because hmm. no one can check to see if the, if two people don't have tongues in Tampa, you know, like it, <laughs> it's just one of those things that you can't fact check it. So he's like, oh, yeah. you can't check it. So I might as well just, it's good for podcasting and it makes him seem like, like even the rough, the rush, the machine story, it's like, it's like nobody could check, could really fact check that in a million years. And I don't want to out this this comic, but I met him a couple of weeks ago who went to Florida State at the same time as Bert, and nobody knew who he was. Nobody. He's like, I don't remember. Wow. I played baseball. I don't remember him. So yeah, but I don't wasn't know. Bert, wasn't Bert like in a band that like almost went that, that became yes, famous? Yes, 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 yes. Um, the singer of the band. I mean, this is, again is total bullshit. Um, so the singer of his band, um, apparently, or, or I don't know if it's a singer, but like the lead of the band or whatever, apparently he was like so good at music that Bert and the rest of the band members were like, okay, we, we can't have this guy in here because he's making us look bad. And, um, and so they end up kicking him out. And then Bert <laughs> says that that guy ended up being the lead of the band Creed. <laughs> Got stabbed. Uh, and, uh, and, and then he <laughs> I've finishes I've never heard a guy story. get kicked out. He was too good. <laughs> It's like kicking funny... out Chris Chris Farley out of your improv group because he's like he's making us look bad. <laughs> so the funniest part about this though is that he finishes the story with, "Oh, and if you ask the guy, he'll say he'll tell you it didn't happen." <laughs> I think he did because I think it was on uh, Calter or something. There's some audio out there saying I don't know who Bert Kreischer is. I don't know who yeah, he's yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. somewhere. Yeah. He's like, "I swear this is true," but if you if you ask him about it, he says it's, it didn't happen. It's that's like, a okay, well, they, that's a genius yeah. out to say if you if you ask him, he'll say it didn't happen. He'll say he doesn't know yeah. anything about it. Like that's almost genius. Well, it's just um like his career is just a byproduct of like psychopathy. He's, he's just the the ability to lie to that extent. Uh, yeah, it's just like the actions of a psychopath, isn't it? Really, it's, I, I mean, you you asked whether or not it's a good skill to have. It's perfect in know. Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess you kind of have to be to, to be at that level. You kind of have to be like that. But he's got like the perfect like psycho uh, psychology to make it in the industry. He's both a relentless suck up, um, a complete <laughs> star fucker to use one of your terms, and he's also a complete psychopath who will lie about anything <laughs> to get his career ahead. So I mean, it was destiny that he was he was bound to have a Netflix special. No, I've seen behind the Burt curtain, and it's pretty. There's another, there's another Bert. Let's just say that there's just another guy mm. that that's not who he wants out there. And I'm oh, like, really? yeah, it's, yeah, it's a dark place. It is. I've well, heard I think, stories I, I about he's... cheating and stuff. I don't, know oh, I, I, don't, I don't think he's, I've been on the road. He was 100% faithful to his wife and he's not that kind of guy. But what are you yeah, saying? You Chad? You're, saying he's, you're saying he's dull. He's dull. Is that what you're saying, Chad? No, let's he's just say party, he's not a party animal. The career, the career is first and foremost. And if you try to fuck with the career, like I've seen him screaming in the phones to people, like losing his temper, like whether it's his agent or his manager. Oh and God. yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty dark. And uh, 
I, I'm so not you're saying, saying you're saying he's not as easygoing as he comes. No, off. not at all. Not at all. No. Ne- next, you'll be telling me that his laughter isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has that. He can laugh on stage to accelerate a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I listen. I'm still. I gotta. Well, I'm. He's like. He's like related to my mom or something. So yeah, I, I don't hate the guy. I still gotta be. I still gotta. I don't like him. Yeah, he cut me out of his life. I like. I, I'm worried about Bert, but I don't give a shit about Neil. Yeah. I <laughs> like. I. Yeah. I stood so up it's to like him. remotely I, related. I stood up to him, and I don't think he was prepared for it. And that's when he cut me out of his life because I think he lives in regret because he never stood up to Jay Moore. And he saw me stand up for myself. He's like, no, that's not how it works. So I think he he basically blocked me out of his life because of that. So Jay Moore attacked him, right? He punched him in the face or some something like that. Yeah, he told it on our football podcast that he smacked him in the face. Yeah, twice, mm-hmm. right? And he took it and he goes, the reason why is like, I thought that's what we have to do in Hollywood. Because normally I just feature beat- as a feature. Yeah. And I'm and he pulled some of that headliner feature shit on me. And I was like, no, fuck you, dude. And <laughs> He didn't like it. He did not like it. I wasn't playing. Very machine of him. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why the thing with like when when Bobby the other night was yelling like you did the same thing to Goldman. The the Goldman thing was so ridiculous to me because like even if I don't get along with Neil, he can't talk shit about my brother or anybody in my family before I'm going on. That's why people. That's why I was glad that I got to do the documentary. One one of the other reasons was was that it, to clear up like what actually happened because. You know, people just think I lost my shit or I was talking shit about Gullman. Gullman was like literally talking shit about Neil before I'm hmm. going up. So even if I don't get along with Neil, you don't talk shit about someone's fucking family member. And then it's just right. it's just like if, if I'm having problems with my wife, my friend can't go. Yeah, what well, your wife is a cunt. I'll be like, it's, <laughs> it's, that's not it's not the, the fucking tact to, t- to take here. So so but yeah. but Gullman's the same thing where Gullman's like. I'll do what I, you should do one about Goldman. Jesus Christ. I'll pay. I'll, I'll, I know you don't do it for money, but I will pay you mm. if you do yeah. one about Goldman or Bill You'll Schultz. executive produce it. I will executive. <laughs> me and Joe Matarese will pool our money and we will, we'll make this a, we'll, we'll open this documentary at the theaters to make money. No, that's why I suggest either Bill Schultz or Gary Goldman. If you get stuck I- on uh, Bert. I don't think I could do one on Gary Goldman without like the SPLC and the ADL coming after me. Yeah, that's <laughs> I mean, true. It would be too tempting to make certain kinds of jokes. And um, I mean, know. he's almost protected too, and he kind of knows it, you know? Yeah, the... of course he is. Yeah. I mean, he's, he, he was protected even within the confines of that small environment of, of the comedy club. I mean, you know, when you've got Gnome kind of subconsciously taking sides. Then, uh, then you know there's there's a problem. Yeah, and also, you know, at that point he had probably already had the uh, the HBO thing lined up with Judd Apatow, and and you know, Esty loves Judd Apatow, so you know, I'm literally literally playing with fire. Mm. You know, Leslie Jones, and now Bobby Kim. But literally, literally, Bobby was sitting next to Esty. I'm so dumb. Like I, I didn't even <laughs> want to go in. He's literally sitting next to Esty, and Esty was. I I know 100. percent She took Bobby's side. Like. Why did, why was he, he was recording us? What the, this is sacred, this is sacred space. You know, and so, you know, she doesn't know any of the story. She did, she won't even care. She just, she don't like me anyway. And then, and she loves Bobby. And uh, so, yeah, so I might be, you know, whatever. We'll see. But I got, I got legal counsel. I, I'm not bluffing. I have legal counsel. A guy I met on the internet. It's a different guy than um, it's a your old guy. lawyer. That guy's no, a different guy than 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 hammered out my compound media contracts. Different guy. This guy's actually New York based and a very professional uh, type. Hmm. <laughs> All right, so uh, I don't want to keep porcelain. Chad, you got to go. Hey, do we have any other questions for porcelain? No, I mean it's this is uh, when this is when we should have callers because they they probably have a million questions. Yeah, let's go to the phones. No, because they've, they've you've made so many documentaries and and it's like and even when even and and listen like I, I obviously I was flattered that you made one about me but like I think even Norton was because because there's a clip of Norton talking to Sam about it and he was saying mm-hmm. how he was saying how uh, he was listening to the documentary he was walking to the comedy cellar and uh, he said he was laughing he said a lot of it wasn't true whether or not that's true or not is you know, probably debatable, but he said, he said yeah. he was, he definitely got a kick out of it. 
So even the people, even, you know, and Norton's was not flattering. So I think even the people that, you know, I mean, I think Joe Manarese has probably had it, but I, I'm sure Norton got a kick out of his. I don't know if Sam got a kick out of his, but. Yeah, I mean, know. it's not, uh, that almost is kind of, I, I don't necessarily like that, that I don't want, I don't want them to, nec- if it's, if it's someone like you, then it's a different story because it was kind of a pro Kevin documentary to some degree. But the Norton thing and Sam and excuse me and and a lot of the others, it's kind of like I don't want them to like it. I want them to feel a bit uncomfortable. <laughs> I, I want them to, you know what I mean? Like I had this um, during the Jim Norton one. I had this guy uh, help me out a little bit. He wrote a couple of lines and um, and and so we made the we made the Jim Norton thing. Uh, Jim Norton ended up like talking about it on his show, and then this guy that like again he added like about three or four lines in the whole thing. And then he ended up messaging Jim Norton and he was like, oh, hey, Jim, I, uh, I helped on the documentary just to let you know, we're actually great fans and uh, no hard feelings. And I was livid. So I ended up yeah. like, doing this video where I just outed him and I just said, this guy's a fat piece of shit and uh, he's dead to me. Um, yeah, because you know, don't I... want that. It's one thing if Norton likes it, don't be like, hey, man, we're, we're glad you, you know, like, hey, you know, we want to be friends. It's almost like, you made it to like this guy wanted to be friends with Norton now, you know? Yeah, like I'm not a Norton fan. Like I don't, I don't think he's very funny. I don't like his comedy. I think he's and and there's a lot of things in Norton's, you know, closet that are quite questionable. I mean, you, you dare mention the show that shall not be named to Jim Norton, and uh, I guarantee you'll get blocked quicker than uh, quicker than you care for. Who, who who's the who shall not be named? Um, it's, it's, well, it's just a, you know, it's, it's an inside Opie and Anthony reference where, um, they had a, they had a show with, where they brought on a number of underage girls. Mm. Um, they plied them all with alcohol and, um, there may or may not have been some sexual activity, uh, involving Jim Norton. And, mm. uh, yeah, it's, it's one of these things that kind of like they've referenced going forward and, and fans have called in and trolls have called in sort of trying to, you know, get this out of them a little bit and uh yeah it makes them quite uncomfortable but yeah i mean that's just one example of, of an up and i think that like again with the documentary on jim i just feel that the louis ck thing really left a bad taste in my mouth so how we, we, i mean he, he gets called a worm for not just the shape of his body and the scalp of his head but um just just in the kind of his actions like the louis ck thing where he he basically kind of meandered between sort of, you know, taking his side sort of and then chastising him and then releasing a, he did like almost like a press release where he completely distanced himself from, from Louis CK. And then, you know, the temperature changes a little bit and now Louis CK is kind of, you know, welcome back in to some degree and he's acting like none of that happened. And I just think that's indicative of, of the kind of person he is. And, and, you know, he, he just got no respect from me. Um, were, you, were you ever a fan of Norton, even when ONA was like uh, go, working on all cylinders? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I don't want it to come across like I'm now some obsessive kind of you know troll that, that hates these people. I mean, it's been, you know, three or four years since I've listened to sort of ONA content. And um, but no, it's, it's, it's just, you know, like I said earlier, you kind of grow out of it to some degree. And um you know the chip jokes at one point it's kind of like ah, and then it ends up you're just basically watching a prop comic and you just and it's it's like okay why why am i watching this is, this is like vaudevillian shit why is this <laughs> i think that's why i like it so much <laughs> yeah but like irony only carries it so far where you can only sit there for so long and say yeah this is all ironic so therefore we can get away with it and ultimately it's just it's terrible and it's and it's just a sad display from a 50 something year old man to be doing this and the idea that now chip is a much bigger get than jim norton i mean it's it's again it's a sad indictment of his career um didn't you retire for a second uh me yeah then she said then yeah, yeah stop yeah. making do you just weren't interested in it anymore is that what happened no no um what happened was about two years ago um i moved to london which is where i, I live at the moment and uh, I got a new job and, and it was kind of like a job that I've been wanting to get for. I've been, you know, I went to uni to do this and then I, I freelanced and I did a load of other work to get to where I am now. So 
Um, yeah, I just basically wanted to sort of pump everything into that. And it was at a time as well where I kind of like um, just got a bit tired of making the documentaries, really. So I just kind of wanted to give it a rest. Yeah, that bring, that begs the question. Uh, I know when uh, I think Beige Frequency got shot, <clears throat> when he did that Brendan Schaub thing, he got shot, shut down a couple of times. Have you, are you, first of all, are you guys friendly? And second of all, mm. have you been like sued or anything? Do you guys get sued? Um, I don't know. I don't, I've not had that kind of issue. I mean, yeah, I, I like beige. Um, so we, we sort of tweet to each other every now and again. Um, I mean, nah, nothing really. The, the worst I've ever got, um, was probably a, a guy called Davis Arini. And it was part of a saga of a card documentary that I made where, um, he ended up writing this huge piece about me and he was threatening to sue me and for defamation and all this kind of stuff. And the funny thing is this guy, and it's such a tangent. You, you guys won't know who he is. Um, it, it's, it was part of the Sargon of a Car documentary, so it's, it's kind of irrelevant to this universe. But he was in the documentary for about three minutes. <laughs> and I didn't really say much about him, but those three minutes hurt him so bad that he was, yeah, threatening defamation lawsuits and all kinds of stuff. But no, I mean, not really. Most people have been kind of... I, I mean, most people have, have kind of let it roll off them. Even Gavin, he kind of... You know, he vented about it for a little bit, but that was about it. Sargon hasn't really said anything about it. Baked Alaska said something about it, but, you know, it wasn't really. So, yeah, it's, it's mostly been... And, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I think the, the body of work is good anyway, so I don't really care about, you know, the reactions too much. But now I've not really got into any trouble. And the, uh, the Jim Norton thing uh, that they don't like to discuss that show did, did they i was at serious and they just scrubbed it from everything if there if there was if it was if it did seem like it was getting weird there is that what happened um i'm not too sure what i mean i think that that show you can get it because there's, there's you know the opie and anthony fan base are just mad autistic with this stuff like they've got archives from every single minute of every single show uh, there's a guy i know called cc red who um, yeah, he's he's got just terabytes worth of, <laughs> of show content, so I'm sure it exists. But um, you know, it, it, that was just a very that was just a small example of of a much bigger sort of issue with Jim Norton in in that you know he's not all this kind of like wigs and smiles that we all see on the Chip Chipperson show. I don't think anybody is, but I mean, just the, I mean, uh, like listen, I still like Jim Norton. It doesn't it, that doesn't change anything. Mm. But even when I when I did the um, when I met Bert, Bert was going to do my podcast. I met him at the Stress Factory, you know, and hmm. um, so like I, I, you know, I know him a little bit. And like I said, my mom knows his his uncle or something or his mom or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, I, he shows up at the Stress Factory. It's Saturday night, so I think he's going to be like Crazy Bird, and he's all like all business. I'm like, what? Well, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm like, hey, yeah, where's hey, the fun can, guy? <laughs> I'm like, hey, can you can you see if Crazy Bert can show up, can come over? And I, because uh, because I didn't want to really, I didn't want to do like a, a you know, talking comedy or the, about mm -hmm. David Tell or you know, get all nostalgic. So, but it, you know, it's like everybody's kind of something, you know, and uh, yeah, 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 you know, Bobby Kelly's is a is a is, you know whatever. I mean, Bobby Kelly was like, I'm just bringing it back because we're we're done here, but but uh. Bob, the thing about Bobby, Bobby's always like, you know what, dude? Like, he's always like, you know what, dude? And, and like the fact that he wouldn't let me leave the club <laughs> without tearing my head off. I was like, you know what, dude, you're not as fucking chill as the, uh, as you would have people believe in. And I haven't seen that. I've, I see Bobby f on stage sometimes getting like enraged, but that's for, yeah. I always think that's for the sake of his act. So, so that's why you gotta be, you know, and the Gary Goldman thing is like, Gary Goldman, have you believe he's the most progressive, fucking open-minded thinker, and he's just—he's a straight-up rageaholic. So, so yeah. it's like it just kills me that these that fans have no fucking idea. And when I watched your Rogan thing the other night, I was like, and then I had that fight with the guy on my birthday dinner. I was like, I go, the fans literally have no idea half the time what the fuck what's going on with these people, you know? Like oh, these, I've never these, told this before. These people that these these comics or or show business people that they worship, and it's like they everybody's like everybody has something that they're fucking ashamed of or that they should be ashamed of, you know. Here, this is something right, I've right. never told. I don't think I've told before. 
um, we were at the Hollywood Improv in the lab. It was me and Tim Dillon, Joe Rogan, and Paige the Booker, the four of us. And it was right around the time uh, Jim Jeffries, you remember how he, they, they edited that video or something? For a comp- to who, yeah, whoever. They, you remember they chopped up that video and it made it look yeah, a certain yeah, way? Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, on the Jim Jeffries show. Yes, and it just came out, the unedited footage. So we're mm-hmm. in the hallway talking about it. I don't know Rogan well at all. I mean, and we're just kind of talking. He's like, yeah, man. He's like, wow, I can't believe they did that. And his, his, his headshot was on the wall. You know how in the improv they have all the comics? He ripped it down because of that in front of me, <laughs> Paige, the booker, and Tim Dillon. He's like, no, nah, this guy's a fraud. And he, like, threw it threw it over. And they were like, holy shit, this is crazy. Ew. So but he was mad that Jim Jeffries did something like that fraudulent. Yeah. He was just like, fuck that, dude. He's like, yeah, you can't act a certain way and do this. So he ripped off the poster off the wall right in front of Tim Dillon. None of them can deny it. It happened. We were all there. Isn't this a guy? What are you going to do anyway? <laughs> What's that? What are you going to do anyway? You're going to say that's not right. Put it back up. Yeah, I know. I was just like, all right, well, I guess he's mad at. Jim Jeffries. I don't know. I thought, I thought Chad had a really juicy story about somebody. <laughs> no, it was just one of those reality based. I, it, it, it was something I never told. And I witnessed. Yeah, but is that is more there. is that more reflection on Rogan or Jim Jeffries or, or neither? I think that we could let the viewer decide. I think that's the beauty <laughs> of it. No, I, I, I'm just saying I'm just saying, listen, when I saw it, when I saw it, I was watching the, the like I said, I was watching the Joe Rogan thing. It's like it's just comics are just like they're all they all just want to be famous and rich and like whatever so the fact that joe rogan is like basically telling everybody this is science behind his supplements that he's that he's shilling it's like <laughs> it's laughable and then in the same and then it's i watch it in the same week he's saying the vaccines like don't take the vaccine because is there enough science behind this and do we know do the do certain people it's like just shut the fuck up but he can't he can't because he has to keep you know the the fans want it they the, the his fans are conspiracy guys he's you know i i mean i don't know i don't know how many times he did the show with alex jones but it just seems like they're all in fucking cahoots and they know that there's a shitload of fans there just like there's a shitload of fans with mma there's a shitload of fans with like weed and so i, I just and and you know the the conspiracy it's like it's just it's just shut the fuck up is what I say. Just shut Damn. the fuck up. But they but they know like fucking Sam Tripoli is like doing a show now with uh, Eddie Bravo. Right. To get to get the fucking and it's all it's that same shit. Right, Chad? Yeah, that's because they you, see it works. They see it works. It's a, it's a brand. And that's what yeah. like Chrissy Mayer was doing. Like she's trying to jump on whatever. She's doing thing. a female version of that with the fake tits. I mean, so, yeah, she's doing that. Find out how many tickets she sold. I couldn't get to the down to Tampa yesterday. I already know. It was it? It wasn't even fifty, and it wasn't even sold tickets. Mm-hmm. We're just people coming to a comedy show. That's all it was. But I mean, the Rogan supplement thing's even worse when you think that Aubrey Marcus, who runs on it, like Rogan was kind of in business with him, and he kind of took a piece of the company, and then started chilling, you know, Alpha Brain and all the stuff that that that, that company sort of pumps out. So I mean, you know, it's even it's even one more layer of like ridiculousness yeah you know, all I, those all those supplement things i i don't know if they're all fake but they're they're all they all seem like sleazy and they need a celebrity spokesman like mm. rogan so it's a perfect fit but for him to be yeah. like if we're for him to be talking about science they, like this stuff has been we're talking about science here folks with this with these supplements that i'm shilling it's like <laughs> just okay but but then yeah but then the vaccine i don't know about the vaccine bob levy who we all love is like saying he won't take the Not vaccine because it hasn't been <laughs> because yeah. it hasn't don't, been. Don't speak on behalf of porcelain. <laughs> it hasn't been. I knew I knew somebody would jump in on that. <laughs> anyway, he's saying he's saying I did a show with him. He's like, I'm not going to take the vaccine. Has it been tested properly? He's telling me that as he's smoking a cigarette. I'm like, I'm like, cigarettes <laughs> have been tested forever, and they've shown that they're they're bad for you. But you're worried about a fucking vaccine that six people got blood clots with, and they're all women. Yeah. And hopefully they're all fatty. So it's just it's a it's just amazing. And like the the fans don't care. I know they don't care how the sausage is made. They just want to be entertained. And they don't care if Tim Dillon's gay or not. They they just go like just keep entertaining us. We don't really Speaking give of a shit. Sausage being made. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We don't give a shit. We don't. So it's just, but it's laughable. And I feel like a fucking moron even talking about like you know like the, the fans don't care. But but the fact of the matter, like they put these guys on a pedestal. 
And they're like, you know, every, the machine's a true story. And, and you know, Ro, Joe Rogan can be trusted. You get mm -hmm. big enough, uh, people just believe you. If you're famous enough and you're popular enough, people literally just believe you. Like my, my friend at the dinner last night, he was like, he's arguing with me about like shit I know on my fucking birthday after I was attacked the night before. <laughs> before. By the way, I'm sorry to bring cupcakes like Brian P. McCarthy would have for your birthday. Yeah, should have brought, should have brought. You should at least presented them, even though we can't exchange cupcakes on the thing. Yeah. Also, the, right, the funny thing with Rogan, yeah, uh, go ahead, I was just going to say that, um, like, this is the guy that pulls Jim Jeffries, um, you know, poster from the wall or whatever he did, like as if he's as if he's got some kind of moral authority now. And isn't he allowing Spotify to just completely rape his entire legacy just for like hundred million dollars? Like, the audacity of that is is just insane to me. Like Rogan. He he walks around like like as if he is the guy that calls it as he is, you know, the Carlos Mencia shit, and he's got more skeletons in his closet than all of them. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it... <laughs> we should have just cut it right there. <laughs> I, I see what you're saying. Like he's trying to be the moral guy, the the guy who's leading the charge here of hacks and non hacks, and which should be yeah, I get it. I see. I, I see think the he just. I just think he like literally wants to be the alpha male and, and, you know, he kind of won because Mencia was the, was the King in LA for, especially that, that mm -hmm. time frame. Mencia was definitely the King. He was the most popular guy and he was basically having his way, did whatever the fuck he wanted. And Rogan stood up to him. And like I said, Rogan should be commended for standing up to him because the video is still compelling watching because, because uh, Rogan didn't have a mic and Mencia was shitting all over him. Uh, Mencia called him a bitch right to his face. Yeah. The fact that Mencia didn't fucking, I mean, the fact that Rogan didn't punch him right in the fucking face right there is amazing restraint. He waited till he got a mic, he turned the crowd and that basically fucking made his career in my opinion, because on some level you just got to respect it. But I'm saying like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. don't put these guys on such a pedestal that you fucking, but when I, when I, friend, when I hear my friend talking about you know, he's now he's a Tim Dillon fan and a Joe Rogan fan. Like, am I do I do I am I jealous? Maybe, but mostly it's just like you don't know these guys. I'm telling you what it's like me telling you about my brother Neil or Dave Chappelle or whoever. It's like I know these guys, so you think you know them because you know you're a fan, but you don't know them because like everybody's like kind of a dick when they're not on stage or when they're not uh, presenting themselves. You know? Yeah, rack them, rack me. Hey Porcelain, right. what's your what's your address? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we should address Porcelain. Does Porcelain? He, I, well, even when I did my interview with him, he doesn't do video because he he has a job and he doesn't want to be. And uh, it's, so. it's it's also it's also because um, you know, it's it's just easier for people that you know don't like you to fuck with you if you've got your video everywhere. I mean, I know that's just from Discord servers, so it just makes more sense. But no, it's it's just that like. I, I'm not, I, you know, I'm not the thing. It's the doc the documentaries are the thing. Um, if you like them, great. If you don't, then whatever. But um, no, I mean, I'm. It's know, also a mystique. It's also a mystique yeah, with your voice. Totally yeah, I've who I am isn't important. I don't think. I, I've always thought that when when making this kind of stuff, is it really doesn't matter who I am. Um, no, but it know. does. But it does help the mystique that we can't see you, and that like you could be a guy from Tennessee who just does a great British accent. You know, so that's what I'm also, going. I, I'm 400 pounds as well, so you know, that's a, that's a joke. And and he's black. <laughs> I'm he's a 400 black. pound black man. And you call, but you call Bobby Kelly Bobby yeah. Bally because you know. <laughs> well, you know. You're fat, it's but like, you make like your own. Can say the you make, you're fat, but you make your own fat jokes. Yeah, blacks can say the n word. You know. Yeah, <laughs> you got your license. He's not in it for the glory. <laughs> no, it's not it's that. A, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to come across as some kind of vigilante. I mean, it's, it's just that I, I've never thought it was that important to, to, you know, be on camera. And besides, like, there's not really a, there's not really a vehicle for me to put myself on camera that, that would really benefit me. I mean, I, I don't do podcasts. I don't really do interviews outside this. And, you know, I'm doing this because you were gracious enough to let me interview you. So um, there's not really any reason for me to do it as well. But I think you and Joe Mattery should try the podcasting route really couple of episodes oh it would be dreadful i can't imagine <laughs> if anything worse i mean the event if our to, interview is anything to go by then uh, you should do I, a I documentary wanna... on you guys trying to do a podcast <laughs> yeah <laughs> some kind of, like, Louis before, you kind set, of thing. before each podcast you'd have to do a pre-interview to see what you're going to discuss <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> and then an interview before that to discuss the pre-interview. Yeah, actually, person, this was that. the pre-interview for you. We're going to do the podcast <laughs> right now. You ready? <laughs> I mean, it's so. I mean, I'm warmed pod- up. Yeah, yeah. No, podcasts are so like just by the seat of your pants. But obviously, so for Joe to be like, okay, let's mm. do a thing. But I but think so- he's just. I think at this point he's so paranoid. He's so like he doesn't know w- w- what's coming well, or going. But like you I'll said, people Joe. really genuinely have an affection for Joe Matteris, you know. Yeah, well, I was saying this to him as well um, in, about podcasts as a, as a sort of format. Um, like I'm. His his problem is is always been that he is, he thinks that he is interesting enough to to put the podcast out. He thinks that like him being medicated and his self help stuff, and then him opening his life up as as the life of Joe podcast did. Like ultimately, people are very self absorbed, and they're not going to glean enough about your life to apply it to themselves. I mean, a few people might do that, but and I gave him you as an example. I said, look at Kevin. He's approaching a thousand patrons. And he's basically throwing chum in the water. Like he knows what we want. He, we know he knows we want drama. We want controversy. We want, you know, bridges burn. We want arguments. And he's like, he's giving us that. So like, obviously, the numbers are going to reflect it. What are you giving us, Joe? You're just giving us your medica- your your like pill talk, and no one's really invested enough into another person to to really appreciate how like what his dosage is, and 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 especially not to hear that on a week by week basis because his dosage isn't going to change week on week in week out to any degree that's interesting right i mean i literally got beat up for my fans this weekend i i, I know yeah. i know i know what they like and i i do it for them i get beat up so putting your yeah. body on the line i mean i can appreciate that at least. <laughs> i told bobby like in the text fighter. i told bobby in a text i said thanks for not hitting me in the face because it's like i can't i don't want to get hit in the face you know thanks for just yeah, going yeah. For the body <laughs> But he, I don't pretty. know if he can even reach my face because he's he's low and he's he's I don't know how big his arms. Yeah, I'd imagine he's got like T Rex arms with all that fat <laughs> around him. Like, I mean, I, I don't know how. Oh, now I'm gonna get beat up to again. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like fighting like a, a Mario boss or something, where it's just like a big <laughs> circle with arms. That's awesome. All right, so uh, so I'm sure everybody here. Well, whatever. Let, let's just plug the, the U- YouTube.com porcelain p o r s a l i n, and I don't know I, I don't know which one you start at. I, I the, Matt, the Joe Matteri's number one is a great is a great starting place. But I'd say just do the trilogy. Yeah, they're is all it- great. They're all everything I've seen is great. The I, I watched the Gavin one. That's great. I watch I watch half of Rogan last night. That's great. I the the Norton. I don't know how much I've watched. I watch all of a. Uh, Sam, that was great. I watched half, I think half of uh, half of Norton, and then mm. uh, I, for some reason I got distracted. But that, I, I'll probably go back to Norton because <laughs> I watched that. That was, I think, the first one I watched. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will say that the next one I do, it's not, and just to answer Chad's point earlier about me um, sort of getting cold feet with the, the Burt thing, I've kind of, like, initially it was a case that, like, I didn't think it was enough just to have lies that I can't even prove either way. And to also just be like, okay, this guy isn't funny and he takes his shirt off and he sucks celebrity dick for money. Like that wasn't enough. And I didn't, I didn't think it would stretch to a documentary. So I'm now going to be doing Bert and Tom Segura as a kind of like two in one documentary. Oh, that's package. good. <laughs> yeah, combine them. Yeah. <laughs> They're friends. It's, 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 yeah, it's, exactly. And, and there's enough. Oh, that's funny. I think stuff that is between funny. The two. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And, and even their wives, do, they do a thing together as well. So their lives are pretty much, you know, intertwined. So Wait, his wives just... do a show together? Their wives? Yeah, yeah. Um, Chrissy P and um, some old lady. Like, she looks like a dinner lady. I think she's married to Bert. But, hey, um... Can you cu- cut a piece of this thing that we did today and put it in somewhere? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, I was actually going uh, <laughs> to... I was actually going to ask you, Chad, because um, I know you've got some stories. Um, so I was going to ask you at some point to, to maybe um, chip in. Sure. I'll, I'll talk about Bert. You know what I actually funny thing is? You, weird thing is, and this is kind of like some universal serendipity going on or something, but Joe Matt Arise had some great Bert stories. Oh, like he did? Um, he had a good Nate Bagazzi story, but he made me, he, he tweeted me and he was like, uh, can you not include that? I don't want to, I don't want to fuck with him. Um, but no, he had some stories about where he would, <laughs> it was quite sad actually, because it, because it's Joe, it makes it more sad, but he, uh, he wanted to do Bert's podcast. And so he got his, you know, he got, he flew over to LA to do Bert's podcast. Oh, and Bert blew him off, right? 
He blew him off that one time um, on the day there, but he got his reception to do it, and, and Bert just blanked Joe. So then Joe flew back or uh, whatever. Then Joe um, got a, another invite by the PA to go on his podcast or whatever, so he flew, up, he flew back out again. And the same thing happened all over again. <laughs> and so Joe had to come back. And then Joe's in New York or whatever, and he's trying to get Bert on his show, and then Bert's just blanking him again. And it's just like, you know, just, just sad, really. So Bert, I mean, Joe flew out there twice to do Bert's show. And I, I think he flew one. out there. I think he definitely flew out there once. I don't know if he flew out there the first time, but he definitely booked the ticket. I don't know. Um, I can't remember what he said, but um, he basically, he was booked on there twice and they, they kind of canceled on him both, both times. That's yeah, I think I heard be, something about that. That's kind of and, and, But like the worst thing is like Bert just, he didn't, you, you know how like, I mean, I don't, I'm not a comedian, obviously. So you guys, you know, correct me or whatever, but you would expect a comedian to to have that kind of camaraderie where you're like, you know, it doesn't matter whether or not Joe Matarese is kind of, you know, a comedic bottom feeder. You you at least give him the respect of, of, a, of, of a kind of a colleague and you at least kind of go like, look, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, my bad kind of thing. But he just didn't, he didn't give him a, you know, didn't send him anything. <laughs> he just ignored Yeah, but him. they would have if he was famous. Bert would have had him on in two seconds. Exactly, yeah. And, and I think that's that's why I will end up using it is because, it, again, it exemplifies the kind of, you know, star fucker that Bert Kreischer is. The this worst is the- part is, sorry, Chad. The worst part is that, listen, I, I just know from my own thing, the worst part is Joe's got to fly back and his wife goes, how'd the podcast go? And he goes, I didn't even get on. So she's like, <laughs> you flew out there? And then he's like, yeah. I, like, I, 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 I. Then you, so then it's like just not an embarrassment. Then it's a family embarrassment. Yeah. And that's fucking, that's just, that's it's the just, worst. Like when you're single and you just got to sit with your own shame, but then your mm. wife looks at you like, what the fuck? He didn't put you on? And then yeah. then, then you just like go over to his fucking house and go put me the fuck on if you know where he lives. <laughs> he just lowers his head and he's like, I didn't make it. <laughs> Here's another quick bird story. I know you're trying to wrap it up, Kev, but one time we were in Alabama, we were just walking. Just for the record, I like Bert still and I like Jim Morton still. Yeah. Anyways, so we're walking. And, it was and before- I'm not trying to get on their shows. I'm just saying, I'm just saying the, the scales have not tipped. <laughs> far enough for me to, to Bert, Bert had him on a show. He's almost family. Uh, the fact that I don't give a shit about Neil and I give a shit about Bert is pathetic. Right. And also Jim Norton. I've known Jim Norton 20 years and it, nothing could probably tip the scale far enough where I'm like, fuck, fuck Norton. No, even though is, I just shit, yeah. even though I just shit on Jim and Sam two weeks ago. Yeah. Well, this isn't, this is just Bert. Like this, take it for what it is. We're going yeah. for a walk and I had gotten on a car wreck in St. Louis and I was like, yeah, man, I was like, I got to buy a new car. I can't afford a new car. And he's like, I'll just give you a car. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, we have a car we don't even use. You can have it. I go, are you serious? I was like, you don't have to do that. He's like, well, we don't use it. Just take the car. So I'm like, cool, man. And then I, I, I didn't know how to follow up with him. So I text him. I go, hey, man, so how do you want to do this car thing? Never heard from him again. <laughs> <laughs> so you just that is, me that is, But to be fair, that's an awkward text. Yeah. I was like, yeah. how do I ask for this car that, that he offered? <laughs> well, hey, the thing about you- that, though. Is that he already got the fee- the good feeling about doing something good for someone, even though he had no intention of following it through. But like he already got that good feeling of like, you know what, I'm a good guy. I was going to give him a car, and so he doesn't need to give you the car now because he's already he's already yeah. feeling good about himself. Yeah, so he, he used me for the feeling. Yeah, <laughs> you helped him give himself a hand job. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, hey, I, I'm going to be at the Off the Hook Comedy Club tomorrow or Wednesday, May 5th, headlining. And this is the last stand up date I have for a very, very long time because I am burned out. I'm just going to focus on stand up. Please, please uh, sign up to my Patreon. Are you going to focus on stand up by not doing stand up? I mean, focus on podcasting. Oh. So sign up to my Patreon and go to my YouTube page, which is uh, sit down, zoom and hit subscribe because I'm going to start doing some live shit on that. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be at McGooby's all week um... <laughs> with Bob Levy. No. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be funny uh poor son you just start touring the united states i mean you have so many goddamn fans <laughs> at this point that you just do like lectures you do a lecture circuit I just read the i read the script of my yeah. documentary <laughs> yeah and and then that, they, people people ask you questions you just have yeah. the porcelain banner down on the stage you're behind it like maynard and tool you never see you it's perfect yeah <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, you got to be unknown that. the whole time. Yeah, you could. I mean, you got so many fans now. From that's what Joe has. No, Joe's like. I don't think uh, they're fans though. I, I don't. I don't think they're that. I think they're no, they're fans. Like, they're fans. No, I think. I think subscribers are different. I think when it, if it's comedy, if it's something that you guys do, I think you can say fans, or whatever. But 
they're so passive like youtube subscribers are just so passive that you can't really say fans yeah but when no. you read the comments when you read the you know when my first when mine came out i was reading the comments the comments were like oh you know they barely mentioned me they're like oh my god what a Oh, so great! You're back. And then the Matteris comments were like, there were a lot of lot lot about Matteris, obviously, but it also mm. a lot of them were just like, so glad you're back. I what a great day when when the like the notification popped up on their phone. So so uh, yeah, yeah but you, it was, you're you'd be a fan mm. of the filmmaker like Tarantino. You're like a Tarantino of this stuff. Well, I, I, I look you, at them all with contempt, to be honest. And well, that's um, how, that's how you should. And that's that's <laughs> the way they prefer it. But I bet I bet you could outsell Chrissy Mayer in Tampa. I know that for a fact. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm sure that anyone here could. All right. Uh, I don't know what I got coming up. I don't know if I'm banned. I don't know. But I'm. I like Portsmouth said. I give the fans what they want. They want con. Yeah. They want conflict. They want violence. I give that to them. I. I. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, happy birthday to me. Thanks for all the fans that uh sent me side cash it wasn't that many but it's always cracks me up where like people are like hey hey i like your show here's seven dollars and uh <laughs> this, this is separate from the patreon one guy mm-hmm. it's you know if people always dm me like whether it's through facebook or whoever it's always dudes one guy was like hey w- w- uh how much do i get it's like saturday night i'm drunk he's probably drunk he said he was drunk he goes i'm thinking about going up to the higher level on patreon how much is it i'm like I really got to do this now. It's like, come on, man. It's it's, mm. it's it's the night before my birthday. I'm drunk. You're drunk. And but I know they want to interact. But I'm like, I, it's it's always dudes. How about one time a girl says, <laughs> yeah, a girl says, hey, how much do you want to see naked pictures of me? And I'll and I'll and yeah, I'll go up and something about your. How about a girl say, hey, I'm gonna go to a higher level on Patreon and I'm gonna send you some pictures of myself. Like, how about that one time? That's yeah. too how, much for my, how engaged that's too much for my are, birthday? Like, how engaged are actually fuckable women in like Bob Kelly stories though? Really, that's true. Probably, probably not. But yeah, I, I, it's 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 partly why I I, I kind of don't do the Patreon thing anymore. It's just the obligation you you have towards you know when when I did it, um you know just just the messages and just the uh, and it was it's nice. I mean you know obviously you enjoy it, but it's it's just. um yeah, I just I just don't really like the the fan interaction, or I mean, for lack of a better word, um, I'd you're rather classically just make stuff. you're you're classically British, though. You're like a you know like yeah, yeah. I'm too. It's too awkward and too kind of you know. It's it's just no, but you're a bit of a snob. Really like... You're like I, I appreciate my fan, the fans, or I don't know if you call them fans of subscribers, but I appreciate them. But but no, but I do. I appreciate them massively. But it's no, but it's, you also uh, have contempt for them on the other hand, which is beautiful. No, that was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> I don't really. Of course not. You have a little contempt. I mean, you're British. You're like uh, my my. What do you? What is the? What is the? I think. What is the royal being family just, call just their? Means... What is? What do the royal family call the citizens of England? What do they call them? Oh, like um, I don't know. Um, plebs. Plebians? Oh, isn't there like a term that you like the uh, not... royal subjects? Or... Yeah, the subjects. Know. They're like your the subjects. subjects. Your yeah. your 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 <laughs> your uh, subscribers. No, I, no I, I I do I appreciate um anyone that enjoys it hey. it's just that um there has to be a line hey i got breaking news and we can we could tease this for next wednesday or something earl got thrown off the roast with jeff ross that they were doing may 12. yeah i know i knew he told me that last week oh okay yeah that's that's probably something to do with me and i feel i'm yeah, i feel a little bit something about that we should have earl on to talk about it yeah we should all right all right, let's wrap this up. Adam's going to go anyway. Porcelain, I really appreciated mm. uh, you no doing problem, the man. show and appreciate the documentary. was. Uh, people loved it. Even Florentine, who usually I never hear anything from Florentine, was like, mm. he goes, he goes, it's the he, he loved it. He's like, your wife should eat your ass or something. It's so good. Your wife should. <laughs> Porcelain, we Ma- watched it driving. Ass, Florentine, Florentine and I watched it in the car driving from our gig. Uh, so the, just the Brennan a, one or the... Um, the Joe Matteris. Oh, the Matteris one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but you, Florentine went when mine came out. Florentine was like, because we always talk about, uh, you know, your wife won't, you know, whatever the sex stuff, and because he had a Puerto Rican girlfriend for a while, and she's like, yeah, she just started eating my ass, and and he's like, he goes, he goes, her friend said, he's like, what are you doing? He goes, my friend said I gotta eat, I should eat your ass more, and he was like, yes, your friend's all right then. So, <laughs> but but I, t- my wife won't do it. I'll do it for her. She won't, she won't reciprocate even on my birthday, and then. Matt, a floor team was like, it's so good. The documentary about you is so good that uh, she should, but she still hasn't. So mm. we're still waiting on that. 
All right, let's wrap it up. Thank you so much. And we'll be in touch. We'll have you back on uh, whenever you want. And especially after cool. the Bert and uh, the Bert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bert. Yes, and hit me up, uh, Morrison. And I, I've yeah, got more uh, stories. Yeah, yeah, hit, yeah hit chat up. Me. That'll be funny. I'm laughing. I'm just thinking about the two of them. Well, I just, I just need to, I, because I, I'm, I'm not really into Bert Law, so I just need someone to fill in gaps. And then especially like, you know, sound bites. Yeah, plus they're so intertwined now. It'll be hilarious. Exactly. And they'll get a kick out of it. Trust me, they'll get a kick out of it. They, there's no way they won't. Who All does? right, everybody. Thanks for the thanks for the Patreon. Thanks for the side cash on the on the with the with the PayPal and thanks to Adam and all the fans and Black Cat too. Yeah, support the troops. All right, God bless. Thanks, Portland. Yeah.